I am Dr. S. Gokul Raj, coming from Kandaswami Naidu College for Men. I would like to thank Vivekananda College of Arts and Science for Women, the Department of PG and Research for arranging the webinar on recent advancements in bio and nanomaterials. At this moment, I would like to thank our munificent donor, Dr. C. Kandaswami Naidu, who enchanted his trust to Pachepa's trust, which maintains six colleges under it. Pachepa's College Men, Ananagar, Pachepa's College Kanjiburam, Kandaswami Naidu College for Women at Kadalur, Kandaswami Naidu College for Men at Ananagar, and Chalamal Women's College. And I come from Kandaswami Naidu College for Men at Ananagar. Here, I have given a list of physicists and scientists and their inventions. In the 16th and 17th century, when Newtonian mechanics were introduced, there were only basic understanding of physics and physical phenomena. During the mid of the 18th century, by the introduction of ohms and electromagnetic inductions, we were able to identify different electromagnetic spectrums available till that day. But when quantum theory was introduced in the uh, start of the 1905 to 1920, a bigger revolution has taken place. Now, due to this, we were able to get a wide range of electromagnetic spectrum. You see that this electromagnetic spectrum varies from a low frequency to mid frequency to the higher frequency. When we consider these frequencies, they are used in widely larger spectrums. See, for example, we do use in the visible spectrum. And of course, when we go for visible near IR, you ultra IR, very terahertz frequency, you can. Now, coming to the nanomaterials, the term, coin uh, term, in the global scenario, we have man manufacturing, instrumental, the education research, fundamental process and nanoscale devices and major instrument facility which are all oh, revolves around us. Now, where do these nanomaterials come from? Of course, obviously, we do have a periodic table, nothing goes out of this periodic table. So, we do have a periodic table of elements through which we are going to synthesize the nanomaterials, use it for device fabrication. And what is its properties? When we deal about the strength, we are dealing with metallic materials. As uh, Dr. T. Bina has earlier suggested about the mixture of materials and the materials plays a role. It can be mixture of the metals ceramics which can be made as composites, polymers, plastics, but all these depends upon the strength, hardness, ductility, malleability and toughness and of course not but the least it is a machinability. So, when we go for a machinable tools we need to have such kind of phenomena. So, let me uh, give you a smaller example. We consider these steel based alloys when aluminum based alloys, lightweight, nickel based and copper based materials. You see that many automobile parts today made up of composite materials and we use semiconductor technology. Of course, with the availability of semiconductor technology, we were able to connect some thousand students, uh, the enthusiast, teacher and community, research community through this webinar. This uh, are all possible only due to the modern advancement of this semiconducting technology. You see that every day we use these automobile parts, we use a mobile phone, camera, laptop, digital phones and of course, uh, what not we are using these technologies, right. And the advancements that we live in this includes the automobile sector, motor, electrical tools, so magnetic resonance imaging, 
these mobile and automobile industries mechanical electrical various fields needs materials and when we say about the strength of the material and toughness of it we get different kinds of material in different uh, physical properties you see that ceramic consists of a strongest material whereas the weakest material wood and wood products foams and rubbers have weaker materials when we are going to combine these metals ceramics and polymers we are going to get a composite material and these composites definitely going to play a major role in the uh, 21st century and now coming to the magnetic material we do face the magnetic hot soft magnetic coarse in electromagnetic inductions every phenomena we do face this and electronic materials we consider this one of the physioelectric classical physioelectric phenomena these uh, play physioelectric phenomena which is being used in mothers mother keyboards alarms medical devices physioelectric transducers uh, so these are the wide range of applications where we use this physioelectric technology you see that we use electrical technology electromagnetic technology physioelectric so all these phenomena when we think about the materials in terms of a bulk material we do have a phenomena where the material properties can be modified according to the nanostructures now from the material uh, perspective to the nanotechnology perspective if we go on to this nano perspectives you see the nano materials we do use in composites smart materials sensors quantum computing lasers photonic gan band gap materials so these are the some of the products now coming to the field area which is it is applied you see in medicine it is used in cancer detection diagnostic purpose drug delivery drug delivery is a future aspect where lot of enthusiastic researchers and people community is waiting for uh, young researchers to give their suggestions a nano biosensor if we see about food cosmetic packages we have nutrient nano capsules nano powders then titanium zinc oxide of course we use zinc oxide for ultraviolet laser production supply which can affect our skin then we have human environmental environmental aspect is an important phenomenon to see that whatever technology we are going to adapt we have to have a concern over the environmental issue see simply we cannot uh, synthesize a material and use it and we can simply throw it then technological when we can go for a technology and industry it includes lighter stronger automotive materials now let us compare this you see i have taken a photograph of a older device it is a computing device which is used as a calculators in the 1960s you see that they were using large uh, scale large sizes of tubes uh, all these things when semiconducting technology was introduced it has taken a wide a large uh, thrust now you see that this technology could spread through various aspects i can simply remember a start of this person who was instrumental in bringing this technology we were able to use all these materials but when we want to find out what that material says to me so what is the material is about surely we have to remember brack so after discovery of x ray crystallography now it is almost 103 years the technological revolution has taken an enormous effect now you see of course we do deal with this 2d sin theta equal to n lambda this is the only one equation where i am going to use it for a comparison after this technological advancement and also the uh, uh, char boolean of course we use it a uh, boolean i want to remember him at the moment the due to this boolean uh, logical reasoning all this we are using in the algebraic charge then baden scotty and breton they developed a point contact transistor in 1947 which in which they were able to achieve a nobel prize in 1956 and of course baden is the one who was awarded second nobel prize for his bcs uh, theory on superconductivity so 
after these advancements we will able to visualize a field of material science these material science includes physical mechanical electrochemical and technological advancements now as uh, in the earlier topic uh, dr bina and madam has in insisted on the materials of uh, all the aspects in, in biological aspects i have just shown some of the material you see that we have ceramics amorphous graphite polymers we are going to use it all these composites so now i have given so the classification of materials is a combination of these materials where nanotechnology can find enormous applications so these are the some of the metals you see iron and steel aluminum copper nickel alloys ceramics aluminum magnesia silicon carbide nitride all these things and polymer we uh, we are born with poly polymers and in this 21st century of course we end up in polymers so this is very pathetic situation that we have to look over the environmental aspect degrading aspect where there are large number of people are working towards biodegradable polymers so composites so now we have given some of the introduction about the material aspects then we have given what are the classification of material now we have a material classification now the next thing is how do i classify these materials generally i classify based upon the mechanical thermal electrical and also in the production aspects so when i consider this a general physical and mechanical aspect i need to have a modulus of electricity strength is thermal conductivity is thermal expansion should be low or else if i am going to have a high heat definitely my laptop my mobile everything is going to go around a heating phenomena so to avoid this what i am going to use we are using a technology where there is less thermal expansion coefficient i am going to have a resistivity the dielectric constant the oxidation phenomena all these aspects should be considered while going for a production phenomena right now i have given a material material aspect classification now going to the material aspects where do these materials stands why do i need this kind of material you see that i have made a comparison you may have a tennis ball you have a pencil tip when i go for a pencil tip it is 100 times the smaller when it is size is considered you see when i keep on decreasing the size multiples of 1000 1000 times the proteins virus and glucose all these molecules i do have in the nano regime you see if i consider uh, the comparison of these things the fullerenes dendrames uh, dendrames quantum dots gold metal oxide and liposome polymers all these things are in the nano regime so now i have a material and a microstructure or microstructure but i have a problem where it is to be solved at the nano level now i have to convert this macro molecules and micro molecules to the nano level so i have a material this material needs to be converted into nano structured material where it can be used right so when i want to compare this i have given a smaller uh, comparison of these gold and quantum nano particles now earlier i said that we have a material and the aspects i am going to use it now in this aspect i can use carbon based material metal based material composite or polymers or dendrimers so in that case i can have a inorganic where any metal and metal oxides can be used or else a organic nano material or else a carbon nano material so these are the wide classification of materials we are we just have classified into three major categories inorganic materials organic materials and carbon nano and you take any nano material definitely it will come into this type of classification then now i come to the question okay how small is it see if i am going to consider it is 1 1 micrometer is 1 millionth of a meter so if i am if i am having a nanometer scale 
it is 1 billionth of a scale I am going to shrunk it. So, we have various nanoparticles which can be used in cosmetic textile paints everything. So, the next question arises I say a periodic table of elements where I am having in terms of bulk quantity, but the requirement is of nano size, but how do I correlate these things? I have a periodic table of course, everyone knows carbon any periodic table then you consider some of the metals silver metal, gold, platinum or iron, copper, nickel I can see the material, but we are talking about nano material then the question arises how do I prepare this material? What is the use of it? So, we say nanotechnology, but whether is it really applicable here? Does it really modifies the structure? Does it plays a role in its physical and chemical property? Everything we have to consider. Then in the industrial aspect, we have to consider about the cost benefit. So, simply I can manufacture any product, but I have to market it. The end product, who is the end user? Of course, we the people, it should be in the reachable regime in terms of cost and production. So, nano material is nothing but simply a powdered material which can be converted into any form. Of course, if I have a powdered material, I can convert it into any form. So, now we have a material, I am going to convert it. So, in the next stage, if I look at the nanostructure, this is electron microscopic images of some of the gold, silver nanoparticles. You see the shape which we see in an electron microscope, of course, uh, on, on normal microscopy which is of resolution 10 power minus 6, we cannot able to visualize it. This is the visualized photograph of a nanostructure. So, this is how the material looks. As I told you earlier, this is a powder. If I look over through the electron microscope, I get this type of structure, right. Now, if you consider a simple nano material, for example, gold nanoparticle, of course, everyone would say that gold, everything glitters is not a gold, but even if it is not glittering, it is a gold, definitely. You see that gold in its normal state we look at its uh, bright yellow laminous yellow whatever color but we change the nanospheres gold nanospheres its uh, color keeps on changing and obviously its electrical and conductivity property mechanical property and thermal property also varies so these are the some of the nano structured images that i have shown for a comparison now this is of size where they are going to fabricate right now we have seen what is the material you are going to use? Now, we are going to see how to prepare these materials. What obviously is a nano material? So, how do I prepare? So, basically, I do have two types of approach. One is top down approach, top down, and another one is bottom up approach. We are having two types of approach. So, what is this top and what is this bottom? See, I have a chemical components, let it be iron nitrate, any solution, anything definitely now I can have it in a chemical state. So, now I can mix it in a solvent, by mixing it in a solvent I can definitely have a mixture of solvent. You see that Suppose, if I have metal salt or metal alkoxide or metal precursor solution, I can mix it. Now, the solvent can be water or organic solvents. If I mix, mix it, it will completely dissolve in the solution. Now, if it is dissolved in the solution, now it is dispersed in the region of nano region. So, now what I am going to do, I can always use this material the parent material, the solution as such, I can use it, I can directly prepare a nanoparticle from the solution or I can use it for a thin film technology. So, this is basically it is called a mother solution, 
from this solution or a parent solution I can use this solution to prepare the nanoparticle or else nanofilms right. So, that was bottom up approach now top down you see that I have for a graphical representation it is like a mountain I have a larger particle I am going to break it I am going to break it smaller 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 pieces. So, how do I break it? How can I if I have a stone like structure say it is around 5 centimeter or 10 centimeter I have a larger particle I need a nano particle what I am going to do as simple as that very simply I am going to have a mechanical grinding. You see that every day we use this mechanical grinding to mix to prepare our flowers for idli flour or dosa flour obviously. So, now it is like a same technique, but where now I am using, using a balls. This is a metallurgical process where I am breaking down the bigger particles into smaller particles. For this I can use a planetary motion or rotational motion of course, we do use some of the mechanical metallurgical process this is a smaller one where I can use it in a planetary ball milling. This is called ball milling apparatus. Since I am using a ceramic or titanium balls, this is called a ball milling apparatus. So, now you see there are a lot of uh, fruits. It is a very good uh, instrument where it is a German made instrument. Uh, these instruments are available in markets. Now, you see that we are grinding these kind of larger particles into smaller sizes. We can uh, uh, grind it, we can rotate it. After grinding it, you see that the balls is covered with uh, some of the nanoparticle. Now, we can scrap it, then we can use it for other uh, testing purposes and fabricating. This is one of the milling. When we go for a larger milling, this is a larger miller setup where I can have a cylindrical setup. This is in terms of larger scale. Now, coming to the chemical methods, we do have some of the deposition techniques. So, I can use it as a inorganic, organic or biological material as I mentioned earlier. Here, I am going to use some of the technique which we are uh, mentioning it as chemical vapor deposition. So, all materials cannot be done this using this chemical vapor deposition. For example, biological materials, it is very hard to coat with this chemical vapor deposition because of the fact that it can damage the cells and tissues. So, only thing is the basic formulation we can uh, prepare it. So, here we are having a substrate, this is a RF induced heating coil. The heating coil will heat our uh, sample material where we can form it on the surface of the plates. So, this is how we can prepare semiconducting technology for uh, fabrication purposes. Right? So, this is a diagrammatic representation. You see that I am having a plate. Now, the evaporation material can be deposited on the surface of it. So, these substrates can be then used for fabrication of nano material. You see all this fabrication, the structures will be at the nano level, the surface will be at the nano level. So, this is how the growth of a uh, film is made up of. These are some of the high tech instruments where we can have a vapor deposition. Now, the next technique is electro deposition. Here, we can use two electrodes, a cathode and an anode. Now, by using a suitable solvent, for example, I have to use a chemical solvent where it is dissolvable in the liquid. For example, if I am going to use tensile strength with a giga Pascal, I have a single wall carbon nanotube which is around 10 to 50 nano, uh, 10 to 50 giga Pascal, whereas the multi wall carbon nanotube it can vary between 10 to 150. The multi wall depends upon the layer which is stacked, the whether it is a rolled one or it is a steel. You see that the stainless steel, when I want to compare the tensile strength, the tensile strength of the stainless steel and Kevlar is around 1 and 3, whereas the carbon nanotube, it is having 10 fold, which is a very large amount. You see, 
then the elongation at break it is around 50 to 15 to 50 but whereas the elongation break is very lesser so these are the advantages of carbon nanotubes right then when, while considering the reactivity and toxicity it is in the research level where the toxicity as such carbon is not that much harmful when we consider it for a drug delivery but the end product after delivering it should return to the uh, waste but whether it is possible at the next level so these are the some of the examples of carbon nanotubes then applications you see the uh, material applications when we consider a small part of uh, nano material applications i have considered the carbon nanotube you see that it can be applied in electrodes capacitors lithium batteries hydrogen storage sensors in afm tips then in terms of electrical field emission display and lithium ion batteries you have lithium ion batteries and this lithium ion batteries as such we do we don't have any recycling technology but it is very harmful obviously everyone knows that lithium uh, ion battery can explode at any time when it is getting overheated but the technology is avoided in future we may replace these type of nano based uh, carbon nanotubes based uh, lithium batteries which can reduce the environmental pollution or toxicity and in hydrogen storage devices so where, where, uh, for biological applications some of the biological applications dr bina has suggested on some of the biological applications of course i will give you some of the biological applications then paper size battery these are the thin film batteries thin film technology has developed you see that a battery can be fabricated within a fingertip it's of the size of the nail so i can have that much lightweight and thin flexible devices which can operate in a wide range of temperature artificial muscles why not the when we are going to have artificial muscle the, as mentioned earlier by the it can be knee replacement surgery any bone surgery anything can be possible in terms of medical applications when it is can when we are considering the industrial applications it can be fabricated in nanotubes and it can be used as catalysis so today what you see is the variety of the nano materials that we use and of course people who have used this nokia phone uh, would be admiring this and when compared to the present day technology of course we are using uh, uh, smartphones where battery every day we charge our battery but whereas when we use our smaller nokia phone for example these nokia phones which uses lesser batteries uh, battery charges lesser applications it can withstand for four days but whereas when we consider a smartphone smartphone can be used only for a day but the charge may go down but we need to have a larger technology to remember this for a comparison i have made this or a micro so in terms of biomedical industrial metal nano composites and environmental application we do have a lot of opportunity for example in biomedical aspect we do have anti cancer for anti cancer detection drug delivery dr drug targeting is an important area see the only problem with the drug delivery and drug targeting is we can make a material to deliver it like a courier person he can deliver it but what happens when a courier or a postman delivers post at some point he retracts back to the position but whereas here i am using a nano material which can carry the drug to any one part for example if some of the person is having a cancer at the end of the tip of the finger we can make it as a drug targeted uh, drug delivery at this point if someone is having a breast cancer or else a uh, cancer at a fingertip or else at a elbows or any of the area i can make the drug to deliver at the targeted place but after delivering the material we have to retract back so that is the important area where there is a big lack now so now people are working on it we hope that the future generation will be able to make it so now we have antioxidant anti inflammatory drug delivery and antibiotic for bioimaging in terms of agricultural we are uh, in india agriculture is the backbone of any of a trade you consider any trade or anything yeah, india is a very big country with potential agricultural sector we can have a bio nano pesticides 
and uh, the need of the hour is of course uh, we are dealing with a uh, grasshopper invasion and various migrations by insects and uh, birds so that's a potential threat to the agriculture sector now we can have a improved technology for uh, soil culture nutrient technology then for uh, nano fertilizers pesticides so these pesticides and detection of pathogens so these are the various areas in terms of agriculture right the next in terms of industrial sector if people are working on chemistry they can work on water purification system uh, then for a capsulation then uh, super plastic ceramic industrial catalysis nano composites when we consider all these application environmental aspect is an one important phenomena where all the people has to combine together and work for the uh, proper improvement of it so now you see that we have uv protection fuel cell uh, catalysis then pollutants biodegradable polymers the biodegradable in recent days and recent years we are using many plastics so plastics they pollute uh, land air and uh, the gases polymeric uh, plastic waste gases which is burnt uh, of course pollute uh, the air so all these uh, pollutant uh, should be treated so that it is recycled to a better product so it is the need of the hour of course people nowadays uh, they use face mask they use the face mask after using the face mask people are throwing it in the garbage so it is a important potential environmental threat people has to take care of it at this moment during the lockdown then we need to have waste water treatment and also recycling of it so these sensors need to be developed for environmental purpose so potentially the physics chemistry and uh, biological people combine together and work on the various nanochemical aspects i'll just uh, uh, highlight one of the few point so if you consider the medicine you have diagnostics drug delivery tissue engineering and cryogen so now in the information technology we have memory storage see due to the memory storage we were able to communicate between some 500 uh, members registered members across it so how is it possible so these are all possible only due to the advancement of this semiconductor technology so environmental application we can have a carbon capture so i have highlighted few of the uh, area where i can uh, suggest you few of them. for example photo catalyst and we have sensors you see that we can have heavy metal contamination removal water treatment removal and energy when we consider energy we have semiconducting technology where we can produce uh, uh, enormous energy now we have solar technology solar technology it is around 12 to 15 percent but now in recent years it is increased to 15 percent so if all these things together we can work out we can have the electrical magnetic mechanical optical applications and biological applications where there is a large potential people can work towards the development of it so this is what the future is about and in this area i have condensed a few of it now you see that a physicist chemist and biologist all these people has to combine and work together to produce these nanomaterials so it is not a single discipline oriented uh, technology nano science is a combination of physics chemistry and biology you see that if we uh, need a uh, optical and laser technology we need a uh, engineering person to design it or a physical metallurgical person to visualize the material to analyze the material and in the biological aspect if i want to test the medicine and the biological aspect we need to have biology person a medical doctor or else if you are going for a uh, testing we need to have a ethical uh, committee where we need a zoologist so even for a biology which includes botany and zoology suppose if you are testing the material on uh, live material such as rats or monkeys definitely obviously we need to have a ethical clearance committee through which we uh, should have a biology a zoology person we can so that we can uh, have this technology visualized in future so the application of nanotechnology includes cosmetics biosensors electro uh, direction target imaging delivery vehicles optical engineering pharmaceutical drugs so all this plays a major role so now uh, coming to the last part so what is the role of a student i have just condensed a small part of it i want to highlight the role of a student because the student 
is like a building block of the nation and if they are left unnoticed they might cause a long term major problem to the country. So, the I, I do not usually do not underestimate any student of today, but just I am giving that they are the one who is studying and will be working for tomorrow's future and they are the pillars of the country of any nation. I have just made a economical comparison. You see that we do have some of the sectors. For example, I have education, agriculture, industry, society, economy, financial market, politics and defense. You see that it is the today student is very anxiously involved in participating in all these areas and almost 20 percent of the students you see that it is on the age group of around 20, 20 percent of population and 78 percent lives in rurals. Right? When we see the global scenario, so what is the global scenario? You see that the research and development shows an increasing trend. This is once in five years they used to uh, give the report. Now you see that in 2 billion. So, such a huge amount of money is invested for our research and development. This research and development is not going to end up as a result. It should end up in a product where the end user is our uh, common people. Now, you see that I have given a comparison for the past 10 years in the field of study. You see that the bachelor education has a for gra graduate level of uh, has increased by 100 percent and engineering and technology. You see the second tabular column, the engineering and technology has risen to 272 percent and in 2008 it was around 13 lakh and it was 48 lakh in 2016. In science and uh, commerce and management, you see that there is an increase of 100 percent and almost 85 percent in terms of the education sector. So, the potentially people have large opportunities. So, it is not that uh, we are going to end up in a uh, uh, science, commerce and management where we have a lot of things. So, it is our role. The student has wide range of opportunity in terms of government job, private job and self employment. So, we do have a large sector. So, people has to think about it for future technology development. So, and also they can act as an entrepreneur where these large uh, R&D development sector can play a major role, right. So, uh, people have and of course, we will be discussing on some other uh, time uh, relating to the jobs available and you can be a self employment and entrepreneur. So, people, the younger generation people can look after all this for after the graduation or post graduation, they can go for any field in terms of uh, research and development and future awaits for the younger generation. So, thanks for li listening and it was some of the moment with the former SRO chairman and uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers uh, for uh, the wonderful session. They have arranged two sessions, one on biological material and another on uh, nano materials which I have delivered. I would like to thank Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. He is the one who has revolutionized the head of the movement. So, when he was heading as a president of this uh, country, he has suggested to invest money in lot of research and development sector. The billions of uh, money was invested for the development of the research and development sector through which India has progressed around 100 billion in the recent uh, 3 years and it was a good sign and it was all due to this uh, his uh, uh, tedious effort and uh, he served the country till his last breath. So, Jai Hind. So, I would like to thank the organizers for providing an uh, wonderful opportunity. Stay safe. Jai Hind.